Hey everybody, I recently went back to uh, Alabama to visit the old Cahaba ghost town, which is uh, literally a town that's no longer on the map other than a few ruined houses, and it's quite interesting, and um, I thought I would uh, take you along to see some of the structures that I saw there. I have to say, um, this little fishing camp shack here was quite eerie because it looked like something where somebody might still live, and obviously uh, it's abandoned, but it was strange feeling like I was trespassing on someone else's property. But I was there to see the Crocheron columns, which are what's left over from uh, uh, Antebellum Mansion. It's no longer there. All throughout this entire village, there are empty lots with just remnants of old houses like this uh, chimney, which is literally built on top of a thousand-year-old Native American village site. Um, this big field we're walking through here and where this chimney is was once they're home to a thriving community and there's a river nearby. Throughout the woods there are all kinds of buildings. This was a very strange and eerie one. A uh, really large house. Turned around and almost walked into a spider web. I could get my camera to focus but there he is and he was like right by my face. A big spider. Big web. There's the house. So eerie to be walking around here two weeks before Halloween, no less. This road takes you to a burial ground uh, that's kind of out in the woods, but on the way I discovered this house, which I assumed was the main house, and I later learned when I got back home that this was actually a slave house. And There was a bigger house in the front part of the yard that would have blocked the view of this house, but that house burned down in the 1930s, and the owner of the property moved into this house and turned it into his own house at that time. Uh, and front of the house in the slave times there was just a big wooden porch with some steps coming down uh, when the owner moved in he actually built a sort of a um, Greek style column you know antebellum look with a porch and the columns and the whole nine yards to make it look more southern and more presentable and I have to say this was the eeriest spookiest place I looked at while I was there and in fact while I was there on the property um, a group of ghost hunters came and got access to the house and went inside and started setting up their equipment. So they were doing a ghost hunt that night. Here you can see where one of the columns was. And there's the view. Out there somewhere would have been the big house once upon a time. It's strange that the flowers are still here. The owners are no longer around. It's quite an elaborate structure that was built for slaves. I've never seen a slave house quite like this in the South. This is the view from the back. Of course, it's all boarded up, but uh, there are a few windows where the boards have fallen off and you can see the window panes. Right behind me was just a dense wood, so it's just a small yard and a lot of forest behind. Quite spooky, I have to tell you. I would have liked to have gone in with the ghost hunters to check out the inside, but I didn't ask. They were busy setting up equipment. They left me alone, so I left them alone, you could say. I'm pretty sure there were some other modifications to the house when the owners moved in. Uh, for instance, this uh, interesting circular porch coming out of the side of the house, the big double door. I doubt if that was a feature that was there for the slaves. Of course, it's seen better days. Now it's all crumbling. Near that house, as I said, is a burial ground out through the woods, and I won't show you much of that, but here's one grave that I found out there with a Victorian fence around it. It's interesting because you walk through the woods and graves are all just sort of out there amongst the trees and the weeds. Not all of them have fences like this one. If you read this it says Mealy Stark, S-T-A-R-K-E. Beautiful fence work. This structure I understand was a segregated school back in the day, an African American school for the kids. I'm fascinated by the uh, wooden structure. 
I love the texture of it. I like the fact that you can approach some of these houses and actually look inside or these buildings. The wood's rotting away, but to me it's really beautiful, and so are the bricks. Look at the color in those. This, uh, likewise, was an African-American church, Methodist church, I believe. Uh, that cement brick pedestal in the front there is one of the two columns that were on either side of the front doors. Now it's just a few broken walls. This one remaining partial column. And... A lot of strewn bricks. This is another cemetery in the property. This is called the New Cemetery, which is funny because it's not new, obviously. It was from the 1850s or before. But I'm fascinated by these old Victorian cemeteries and all the care they took in building these fences and all the embellishments they put into it. And this one obviously suffered a falling tree at some point in its history. The graves obviously were left unattended a long time ago when the town disappeared and um, I'm not sure if they were vandalized or just suffered the ravages of time but they're in poor condition as you can see. Spanish moss just adds to the eerie feeling out there, I can tell you that. I always thought that these little tombs on the ground had the remains inside, but apparently they're just a monument on top of a grave. I apologize for the crunchiness of these dried leaves from the uh, magnolia tree. They're like walking on really loud potato chips or something. town used to be, for five years, the original state capital of the state of Alabama. And after two really big floods, the capital was relocated. Then the Civil War happened. Uh, it became hard to make a living in the town. And um, a lot of people just had to literally abandon their properties and, and leave town. Photographed this tree because it was an interesting chunk had been looked like sawn out of the uh, middle of it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to visit my website, keithdotson.com.